Hi, my name is Mike with Navigation Nowhere, and I've been living on the road for three and a half years in my school bus named Navi, but I recently just bought a new one, and I want to show you inside. Let's check it out. I've been living in school buses actually for the past like three and a half years. And previously I was living in a larger 37 foot school bus traveling the country and that bus was really great for everything it was built for. I had tons of roommates, tons of friends, and I thoroughly enjoyed living and traveling there. But as time kind of went on, I found that my lifestyle and desire for types of travel were changing that weren't exactly conducive for a 37 foot school bus. So that's kind of where this bus kind of came into the picture where I was kind of looking for something smaller with a bit more of like a van chassis design but still a school bus so that I kind of had the interior room but also had the ability to go a lot different places since this school bus is like 20 feet rather than my large school bus which is like 37. Buying a small bus was a similar experience to when I bought my larger bus but the difference was kind of what I was looking for. The uh, basics of a school bus are the same in terms of where you're getting them from or kind of what they were originally used for but the difference was once again I think the function of what I was looking for. I wasn't exactly looking for crazy long wheelbases or really long overhangs or uh, huge capacity in terms of like interior space. I was a lot more looking for something that was compact, something that uh, had kind of a different body style too. The one big thing that I was looking for in this short bus was specifically a Collins body um, because they tend to actually be higher bodies um, and they also have kind of more of a square dimension to them which gives a lot more interior room. Whereas my old bus was a Thomas and they um, have that kind of traditional rounded top roof. It did have high interior room. Uh, this bus is a 6'4 interior. My other bus was a 6'4 interior. But because of the kind of curved edges, I lost a lot of that side room above your head. So this bus was really ideal when I saw it on the market because I wanted that kind of full kind of square body to be able to kind of build more dimensionally inside of. So this bus is a 2004 Chevy Collins. It's got a 6.5 liter diesel in it. And uh, it's a 3500 model. So it's got a dually in the back and the exterior is about 20 feet long. Now this school bus uh, currently has um, just under 70,000 miles actually. It was originally used as a boys and girls club bus. So it was really mostly used for like taking the kids from the boys and girls club to the bowling alley or to the ice skating rink or, you know, just back and forth. So on average, this bus actually only did about 4,000 miles a year. So it's, it's in pretty good condition mechanically. I'd have to say that the interior is pretty ripped up because I just imagine that the kids just kind of beat, beat it up a bit, but um, because it only did 4,000 miles a year and it had regular oil changes, I found that the engine's actually in really clean condition, which really got me pretty excited about it. Because it has such low mileage, I was concerned that it was actually gonna be pretty expensive, but I think because this bus was kind of destroyed on the inside, it was actually being sold for only about $2,500, which is what I ended up getting it for. Um, and I think the reason why that was is because, like I said, the inside was kind of destroyed, but mechanics wise, which is the part that I care about because I'm converting the bus, was in still really good condition. So this was actually a perfect bus for conversion for me because the inside's destroyed, the mechanics are in good shape, and in that case, it's perfect because I'm gonna rip out the inside anyway. So one of the nicest things about this bus is I, I feel like I'm actually just driving a truck, which I kind of I kind of like. I mean, driving up in a big old school bus is fun and all, but um, because this is just a 3500 Chevy, Everything here I can get at any Napa, AutoZone, O'Reilly's in the country. So the parts are a lot easier to find around, which I'm pretty excited about. But I mean, hey, it's got it's got a normal car radio. It's got the roll-up windows. It doesn't have anything automatic, which is kind of fun because I mean, it's nice that it has the roll-up windows because it, in my opinion, sometimes too much electronics, things just break. And this is simple. It, it just rolls up and down and um, I kind of just like the simplicity of that. The the lack of electronics and the, the, the mechanics part I think will keep it uh, you know lasting a lot longer. I don't think I'm going to regret going from a larger bus to a smaller bus at all. I think that the transition from a large bus to a small bus has come with the transition of life. Uh, the larger bus was great for having people. The larger bus was great for um, having lots of water capacity and fuel capacity and um, kind of more stationary style living, but I'm looking to do a lot more kind of faster travel, um, a little bit more off-grid travel, possibly even international travel, and I find that I think that this 
wheelbase and this size school bus is going to be better for that type of lifestyle and type of traveling. So I think that going smaller right now is the best decision for me in moving forward. Registering and insuring the school bus was a little bit more difficult because I'm actually registering it in New Jersey currently because that's where my family's from and that's also where right now I'm currently located. So to get the plates and registration, it was just easiest for me to just go to the local DMV and get it done. Unfortunately though, New Jersey has some weird laws with trying to convert vehicles and stuff. So this bus is currently just registered as a non-commercial school bus. Um, and then my insurance is actually just commercial insurance under my company, but that's going to be quickly changing because um, now that I actually have it in my parents' driveway and I legally got it here, I'm now going to be going through the process of converting it and converting it with the state to actually get the title switched over. It's a, like I said, it's a bit more complicated in my state. I, I've heard that other states are a lot easier um, and that's something that I'm going to look into because it might be possible for me to register in a different state. So I've heard Vermont, Montana are, are really good spots for RVs apparently. So I'm going to be doing my research and looking into that, but currently it's registered and insured just as a privately owned school bus with commercial insurance, but uh, that will be changing as I move forward. So I already ripped off this front panel here, but the reason why I did this and I had to find the circuit boards was because this bus has every single kid's safety system you could imagine on it. It has the um, alarm systems on it, it has the Vandalock system on it, which is kind of like the emergency doors, it kills the engine so it doesn't start. So I actually, the day I bought this thing, the alarms were driving me crazy, so I went in and pulled out the parts that I didn't want so the alarms would just stop beeping. So uh, I gotta get this thing kind of taken care of and rewired so that it's at least functioning correctly for what I want. But uh, yeah, it's kind of nice where it's located. A lot of times it's sometimes hard to get to the fuse boxes on buses, but this one's actually in an awesome location, so I'm pretty excited about that. Up here, I have this kind of compartment area, which um, it's kind of empty. You, I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it, but I mean, I'm happy that there's just like an empty space box here because I can easily put like a cabinet um, or kind of do something storage wise with it. So, definitely awesome that this is here that I can actually use it. So, this is the inside of the bus. At the moment, I don't exactly have a lot to show because I haven't exactly converted it yet, but this bus has, I guess, two skylights or two emergency exits in it, which can be turned into skylights or I can patch them off so it's kind of nice that it has those um, and as you can see that the squareness of the sides is really one of the reasons why I got this bus because I can actually stand right up against the edge which is awesome because in my other bus the curve would have came through and this would have never been possible so the design choices in this bus just completely open up because of that but besides that I mean we're gonna rip all the seats out and get this thing going um, actually back here one thing that this does have is an air conditioner actually built into it so the condenser is underneath the bus and it has an AC right here that runs uh, off the engines. The interior dimensions of the school bus are about 15 feet from the back of the driver's seat to the back of the bus and about seven foot six wide with a six four interior. So it does give me pretty good spacing and since the bus is fairly square in terms of the body style, it also gives me that kind of full spacing that I can build up against the walls and stuff. So I'm pretty happy with the interior spacing of this school bus. One thing that I want to point out in this school bus, which I thought was pretty interesting, is where the fuel tank is located. It's actually towards the front of the bus. So they have this nice hatch right here that's for the fuel sender and for kind of getting to all the components on top of the uh, fuel tank, which I kind of like this location. Usually it's in the back of the bus where people usually want to put a bed, which is I think where I'm going to put a bed. But right here, it's going to be really easy to access and I don't really have to create any type of fancy hatch to get to it. But that's definitely something important that you want to know where it is because if you bury that and then your fuel sender goes, you gotta drop the tank and that's that's no fun. Another thing that I wanna point out is the wheel wells in here. They're a little bit higher, I think, I haven't actually measured them, but I think they're a little bit higher than my other bus's wheel wells and I'm not sure if I can lower them at all or what or how I'm gonna get around that, but the location is like three windows back, which is pretty much directly in the middle of the bus, which is fine, like whatever, but I gotta figure out exactly what I'm gonna do design-wise to kind of um, get around get around how I'm gonna hide these because they've got to go somewhere so I'll have to figure that out. I think I need to find some pretty creative ways to design into this space you know just extra sleeping or maybe just somewhere to have people over for dinner and I think that's gonna be the fun of designing this bus is gonna be trying to take the ideas that I have for larger spaces and trying to fit them into a smaller space but still function and just work for my lifestyle. One thing that I really like about the small bus as well is that it's a lot smaller which means I can go different places my large bus, because it was 37 feet long, really restricted me in certain areas, um, such as going into certain national parks or certain back roads or mountain passes, because 
the length of the bus just wasn't allowed on the switchbacks or it wasn't allowed because of length restrictions. And this bus being 20 feet, it really gives me the ability to go into a lot more places. The difference that really drove me in this direction was the desire to kind of go to certain locations that I feel like I haven't been yet. And this smaller bus I think is gonna give me the ability to do that. And that's kind of something that really excites me about this project. All right, so looking at the outside, this engine is a 6.5 liter diesel and it is a van front end so pretty much most of the engine is not very accessible from the front. Uh, there's actually a doghouse on the inside that you can pull off and then I can get to kind of the rear of the engine but I mean it's not the most fun engine to work on because of it's so compact but you know I'm hoping that I can kind of do a lot of maintenance on it, take care of it and then move forward from there. But if we walk around the side the bus is considered like a cutaway so the back of it is just a bus body but it's actually just a 3500 uh, you know chassis so it's it's kind of unique how it's pretty much just a truck or a van chassis with a bus body on it so making you know pretty easy for modifications it's a five window it's about 20 feet exterior about seven foot six uh, wide which is a pretty cool um, sizing because it can fit in a parking spot and things like that. I measured it, I think the height is about eight foot six, so it's really not that high either, so I don't really have to worry about any type of overpasses or highway uh, overpasses or anything like that driving around the country, which is kind of cool. It's got a side battery box, which is houses two batteries for kind of the entire system, so it's nice that they're here and not in the engine because if I ever have to get to them, I don't have to dig through the engine to get to the battery. There's just a battery tray right here, so I'm pretty happy that that's right there. Coming back, um, the tires are in pretty good shape. I checked the dates on the tires. There's a, actually a stamp if you ever want to check your tires. They have numbers on them. Uh, the numbers are usually four digits or so. Uh, they're pretty good. They don't seem like they have really any dry rot from sitting. So I think these are going to last me a bit before I really would have to change them or kind of move into a uh, getting new tires. Pretty much the body is in pretty good shape. I mean, obviously it's a pre-unconverted school bus, so I don't really have any like cool rooftop deck or fun fancy storage, storage containers to show you but um, overall I mean the bus is in pretty good shape uh, there's a bit of rust that's on the bumper but I'm gonna probably be kind of taking that off and kind of redoing the back anyway so really the only spot that I saw rust but not really too concerning because of what I'm doing with this bus a little bit of damage from someone driving I guess around the city bumped a pole or something but once again I'm not too concerned about that it's it's not really bad damage and once I kind of paint and clean it up you'll never notice it so uh, all of the original school bus stuff is still here, so the emergency lights, the flashers, the school bus reflectives, and all those I'm gonna have to remove according to my state regulations. So that's gonna have to be done before I really even head out on the road. But yeah, not too bad. On the passenger side of the bus, it's uh, pretty straightforward. I mean, I've got the air conditioning uh, vent down here, which is for the rear air conditioner and the diesel fluid hatches right here so pretty easy to kind of in and out diesel it's in the front the tanks actually mounted right here behind the tire or in front of the tire and then uh, I'm gonna have to remove the stop sign in my state I know some people like to keep them and do something fun with them but in my state I got to remove it so not a big deal I was gonna remove it anyway personally but you know it's not that bad this bus in particular uh, one thing that I was definitely looking for which was really important was the the rust condition of the chassis because my first original bus, I actually ended up buying a bus that was a little bit more rusty than I would have actually known at the time because honestly that was the first bus I ever bought, which is probably most people's uh, experiences. But this bus was really important to me because I wasted like three months of my time doing a lot of body, metal, and rust remediation that I could have avoided just by buying a better bus. So when buying this one, that was something that was really important to me because I didn't want to have to do that kind of work because I knew it was avoidable but also I knew that it would save me a lot of time and money when I'm gonna be putting a pretty good amount of money into building my house right now into this bus and I wouldn't wanna be putting the money into something that I know is just gonna rust away. So the rust condition is something that I definitely learned um, what to look for, where to look for it and, and kind of making sure that that was a pretty big priority for me. Well, this is my new school bus and will probably be my home for the next few years. So, you know, thanks for coming along and seeing the pre-bus conversion. I'm hoping to convert this thing over the next few months and then we'll be doing a full tour conversion. You can see the entire process. So if you want to watch the build and follow along with what I'm doing, make sure you subscribe to this channel. But besides that, I got to get this thing moving, get it rolling and hit the road. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.